I work full time. My schedule is ridiculously busy. I honestly just don't have any time left in the day to exercise, but I know I need to. Do you have any tips or advice so that I can actually start to do some sort of exercise? I really want to lose some weight and I know that's a big part of it. Hey, welcome back to another episode of the Brave Today podcast. This show is going to encourage, challenge, and maybe even provoke you to step outside of your comfort zone so that you can take more action to better improve yourself and ultimately your overall health. I'm your host, Mark Avens, and in this crazy, whacked out world that just continues to keep pushing a narrative for people like you and me to become softer and weaker and sicker and unhealthier and more dependent than ever, the goal and intent of the show is to help you navigate through this so that you can become braver today than you were yesterday. Now, there's a couple different shows that we offer, a few details just to share. I'll have a featured guest. We call it our guest interviews, pretty straightforward, uh, brave people that I look up to and admire that are not only brave today, but also helping a number of people become braver today than they were yesterday. I also have brave Q&A like today's episode where I'll be answering questions that you have and want answers to. So if you have a question, ask a question and you may be featured on the next brave Q and a anything related to health, fitness, weight loss, et cetera. Those are my expertise. Again, if you have a question, you could drop it down. If you're watching this on YouTube or you're in my social, you can drop me a question just as the questions I have for you today. And I'll be picking some to answer on the show. Next, there is a flavor of the week where I'll be discussing latest news in health and fitness, picking apart latest diet trends, workouts, fads, pills, potions. I just did a recent one on the crazy weight loss medicine. So you have to go back and check that out. If you have heard about, of course, you've probably heard about it. If you're trying to lose weight, get in shape, Ozempic, which is really just one of the many weight loss medicine drugs that are out there. I did an episode on that. You have to go back, I believe two episodes to check it out. Uh, and then lastly, I'll have what's called breakthrough episodes where I'll be digging deeper into an area of physical, mental, emotional, um, even spiritual, basically any area that could be holding you back uh, to help you break through on your own personal health and fitness journey. So with that, today we have a brave Q&A. And the only thing I ask, I don't do any advertisements on the show. I won't be probably ever going to be doing advertisements. So if in reason why is because I want to be able to have the freedom to share and to say what I want to say. And the only way really that this show will grow is if you like it, is that you share it. So I just appreciate it. If you don't like it, then you don't have to share the show. But if you find value in it, the only thing I ask is that you share this show uh, with a friend or a family member, somebody you think it would find value in it as well. Let's jump in. So we're going to jump right in the, the questions. This one's actually exercise related. Thank you for those that are sending your questions in. I really appreciate it. Uh, I had a number of questions come in, three of which I actually pulled together because they're all exercise related. So today's Brave q and is going to be on exercise. We're going to focus on exercise. So the question, the first one, and this is from a 54-year-old woman, and she asked, Mark, I work full-time. My schedule is ridiculously busy. I honestly just don't have any time left in the day to exercise, but I know I need to. Do you have any tips or advice so that I can actually start to do some sort of exercise? I really want to lose some weight and I know that's a big part of it. Yes. So let's talk about exercise first. If you're doing it to lose weight, or we'll maybe touch on the last part there. If you're using exercise as the tool to lose weight, you got to change your thought process because exercise is a great tool to get healthier and more fit, but it's really a terrible tool to use if that's your primary method to lose weight. Um, so that's kind of first and foremost. Second, when it comes to your schedule, one of the things, and it's taken a while and something that not only has helped for me, but also for a number of men and women that have helped over the years with regards to finding the time in your day to exercise. And, you know, we all have busy lives. Uh, I know we, I get up early 4 35 AM, I'm running online coaching business. I have, you know, kids, my wife, got to walk a dog, try to exercise myself, take care of my team, all the meetings, you know, all the things, the deadlines, the obligations and stuff that kind of suck the time from you. One of the things I actually had a coach help me with over the years is to learn how to build my schedule around my life rather than my life around my schedule, including exercise. So for you, I think one of the best things, and if you do struggle like this 54-year-old struggles with finding the time left in the day to exercise, is you have to really do a hard inventory on how you spend your time. And truly the easiest way, the best way to do that is to literally map it out. 
One of the things you can do starting today is to map out how you spend your time. And even if your schedule changes all the time, so maybe you're like a realtor and you have, you know, you're kind of at the mercy of people you're showing homes to, or you have open house, et cetera, or maybe you run a business and you have different meetings during the week at different times and so forth. But I bet you have probably at least some things on your schedule that are, you know, set in stone. I know for me, we have our team meetings every Monday morning at 8 a.m., I have meetings with some of my team on Tuesdays and Thursdays. I have my coaches meetings on Wednesday at a certain time. I also have date night at a certain time with my wife. Uh, and that's a meeting as well. We do that non-negotiable Thursday nights. Um, so there's other things. And then ideally, I try to work in other things. The only way you're going to get a better grasp on getting some exercise in when you have a busy schedule is you got to look at how you're spending your time now. And you're like, Mark, you just don't understand. I can guarantee you there hasn't been a person yet that I've actually had to do this that has not found time in their schedule when they can exercise. So basically what you're going to do to, to start today, this is really something that will be really helpful. And if you struggle as this question and this woman asked, here's what you need to do. You need to write Monday through Sunday and go through your day hour by hour, half hour, minute by minute if you need to. Go by hour by hour and just kind of outline what your day looks like. We're talking like work schedule, the time you get up in the morning to the time you go to bed. And you're going to write down basically what that looks like. Even if it changed, just get an estimate. And then I want you to visually look at it to see. And I guarantee you, whether you spend time you know, on social media or you're watching TV at the end of the day, there could be probably an hour or two in there a couple of times a week. And for those of you that maybe have a busy schedule, I bet you could probably find at least 15 to 20 minutes in there sporadically through the day. And for those of you that with that type of schedule, if really you're stretching it, the best part about exercise is you don't have to do it all in one shot. In fact, we have a handful of students that have really full schedules like yourself, really busy. And they're like, how can I do it? And we make it work where they do small little mini workouts throughout the day. They might do a power walk at lunch and they might do a little bit of core work in the morning. And then maybe they do a part of their body weight training, or if they're able to get to the gym for a quick 15, 20 minute workout, then they do that rather than to try to like chunk it all in one piece during the day, which most of us try to do. Ideally, you have to look at really how busy that schedule is. And then you need to look at as far as building your schedule around your life. It doesn't happen overnight. It's going to take time. But I can tell you one of the things I've learned to do is to create some leverage. You learn how to say no to things that are really not necessary. Say yes. And then have some help for the things that maybe you're sucking your time so that you can actually make a little bit of time for yourself. So that's number one. Second question. This is from a 60-year-old female. Is it better to work out trying to build my strength and tone up? Not under too many people that aren't trying to do that, especially in their 50s and 60s. Is it better to work out and strength train using free weights, machines, body weight training, or bands? I think this is bands in the question. All right. So really, honestly, you can do it with all of those things. They're all great tools to build your body and get stronger and tone up. And you have to realize there's a couple of things. What do you have access to easy? Well, first off, I always like to think of, for those of you who maybe don't have a gym membership or you don't have equipment in your home, you don't have free weights and so forth, you can start with, and a number of people that I've helped get on a healthier path, start with just using your body weight. And that's a good starting point, especially if you have a little bit extra weight to lose. So I would say for the six-year-old who's trying to build strength and tone up, sounds like maybe not trying to lose weight. But I would say is you can start anywhere. Now you have to really make sure a couple of things is how are you going to utilize, whether it be free weights, machines, body weight, or bands or anything. There's kettlebells, there's all kinds of stuff now available, right? How are you going to do that? Well, you got to realize like when it comes to strength training and toning and so forth, you have to have a vision of what you want. Some people might want to look like a bodybuilder. I don't know too many people to do, but except for my 20 year old. But aside from that, if you want to have tight tone body, I think for the majority of people that I've talked to and work with, they just don't want to have saggy skin, loose skin, soft, right? Kind of like the little jiggles around the elbows or maybe the extra little muffin top, right? The thighs that have that like cottage cheese look again, sorry to go there, but I need to. You got to realize that anything is good. The most valuable thing I can share with you regarding strength training, regardless of what you choose or what method you choose, you need to be consistent. And the way to know if you're consistent enough is if it's just getting easier. You're like, oh, Mark, workouts never get easier, right? They never get easier. They're hard. They're really, they're always hard. That's actually a good thing. 
Because the only way to get stronger, to build strength is to actually continue to challenge your body with whatever method you're using, be it free weights or machines or body weight. So that's one of the things that we've done inside of our program really, really well as we progress our women inside of our program accordingly, whether they're in a gym or they're at home using your body weight. So the hard thing, I think, and the reason why a lot of times people struggle when it comes to building strength is twofold. First is that they don't know how to progress. They don't know, should I go up in weights? Should I add more reps? Should I switch it up, change it up, you know, kind of have your body keep guessing type of thing, right? You've been sold that and believing that that's the case. And I can tell you, honestly, like most of the time we just get into a path where we're trying to strength train. And even if we're consistent, you end up doing like the same thing over and over again. And you know, that's the definition of insanity. My answer to this question, as far as strength training, it really doesn't matter. Like whether you're using bands or body weight or machines I've met and I've worked with people with using all those types of methods and they all work. But most people don't know how to really work those well. They don't know like what kind of band should I use if I'm doing body weight? How can I get strong with body weight training? Like, and that's where somebody like me, an expert, has actually already done all the work. You can go on YouTube and do some, you know, some influencer you find on Instagram and they throw some workouts out there. But honestly, it's kind of like you're playing a guessing game. To be honest with you, the best way as you're on this path to getting stronger and getting more tone, your best way is to measure your strength and measure your tone. So measuring your strength, you can easily do that. But let's say you're working with machines and you're doing a leg press and you're doing biceps curls. Well, you're probably going to want to find out how strong you are. And then once you get to knowing like a one rep max, again, you think in like the power lifters world, the bodybuilders world, they do like a one rep max. You don't necessarily need to do that, but you should maybe try and go in there. And if you're doing legs is to do one or two reps and see how much you can push. Because I guarantee you, if you're doing it the right way, you're going to be able to push more or lift more or press more when you're getting stronger. So you actually have to track it and you need to know how strong you're on the front. If you're doing body weight, how many push-ups can you do in the beginning? I would start, maybe you can't do any push-ups, regular like standard push-ups, but maybe you need to start on an incline, maybe using a bench or maybe using a countertop to start. And you can see how many can you do from a countertop. And then you want to gradually progress down to the floor where you would be doing more of a standard push-up. Again, these are just some examples. So I hope that helps. And for the toning part, now, you, of course, you can like look and see if your arms are, if you're at the gym and you notice, but I would highly recommend that you take photos of yourself to take pictures on a weekly basis of yourself. And I know that's probably one of the most excruciating things for us to do is to take pictures of our bodies. But if you want to see improved, you want to see tone, the best way to actually see it is to actually track at that as well. And that's what we do with our students. We have them track their progress pictures on a weekly basis so that we can see. And we notice, which is really great. And there's nothing better than showing a before picture from eight weeks or 12 weeks to an after where they're really working their body, getting stronger, getting toned, and they can actually see that actually taking place, that transformation. So that was question number two. Again, I would actually love to hear from you if there's a way as far as strength training goes and building your strength and toning up, if you agree or if you maybe don't agree, I'd love to hear your thoughts in there. Same thing with the schedule. If this was helpful, I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. Let's go to the third question. It's the last and final question that I have. And this was, I don't have the age on this person here. I know it's a female. How long should I work out for? I've been told both ways. It's better to work out longer with like a lower intensity and I've also been told by a trainer one time to do short, intense HIIT or HIT workouts. Maybe you've seen that high intensity interval training workouts for weight loss. What's better? Well, we already answered that question from one is that you really don't want to be focused on a specific type of exercise for weight loss. Exercise should be something that you incorporate in your day to help get you stronger and more fit, but it shouldn't be in your mind. You shouldn't be attaching your exercise to weight loss. It will help. It will. But the reality is the majority of work you'll do exercising, if you take out, say, 40 minutes to go for a walk or, you know, you go jogging or you even go do a Zumba class or you do a spin class or something like that. You might be even able to burn a lot of calories during that class or, you know, that workout. But the reality is the majority of the caloric burn that's going to happen to help you with weight loss is going to come from all the rest of your day. 
your metabolism, how active you are during the day, the food you eat, so forth and so on. So you want to just kind of be aware of that. But let's go into as far as being told it's better to work out for longer period of times at lower intensity or short intensity. They both work. You're like, Mark, come on, give me like a direct answer here. They both work. Honestly, low intensity is great for those of you, maybe you're a little older, maybe your bones, you have a little more arthritis, you have aches and pains. For you, that kind of working out, lower intensity, going a little bit longer, of course, you're going to need the time. So having the time to do a little bit longer of a workout is going to be fine. That's perfectly okay. And then for those who maybe prefer that intense, shorter, intense workout, that's going to be fine as well. Usually those intense, just when the workouts get more intense, you're more at risk for an injury, but provided that you know your body and you're listening to your body or you have a trainer or a coach that's helping you along the way, that's going to be valuable for you. Uh, I would say in our program, we do both. We have our students and we like them to actually work their way up to getting at least 10,000 steps in a day, which takes time. And, you know, unless you have a job where you're on your feet all day and it's easy to get in steps, right? But for the average person, especially as we get older, we tend to be less active. Uh, just perfect examples. You're looking at me sitting here while I'm doing this podcast. So I have to be more intentional about getting those steps in, which actually takes time. The HIIT workouts, again, as you get older, there's a little bit more risk reward. Can you sweat a lot more? Potentially, yes. For those of you that sweat, uh, will you maybe burn a few more calories? Yes. What I wouldn't recommend is if you're maybe coming off the bench from a number of years from you know doing yo-yo dieting and haven't really gotten into exercise too much, or maybe you were an athlete in the past and you really have been away from it for 5, 10, maybe 15 years, I wouldn't recommend doing the HIIT workouts in fact, I'd recommend you doing some lower intensity stuff and doing some strength training in the beginning and then to gradually feel it out. Maybe try like a medium intensity type workout. Maybe that could be where you're doing like a boot camp, but you're maybe doing a smaller version or you try doing something to that level at home on your own where you can kind of stop and feel out versus being pressured in a boot camp, say at a gym or a hardcore spin class where you're doing sprints and jumps and things. And you know, your body has never done something like that before. So that's something that I would recommend, but ultimately really what really comes down to as far as how long should you work out for as long as you have available, like, honestly, the more you move, the better you're going to feel. If you have an hour a day to spend and you can work out in that hour a day, go for it. If you only, if you have a busy schedule, like our 54 year old and question number one, I would recommend you try to get in little bouts of exercise throughout the day. Maybe go for a walk, do some push ups, have some mini workouts available for you to do. And then, as far as the time goes, the most valuable thing I can tell you is that you want to be consistent. So, if you can dedicate and you can commit to giving yourself, even if it's 15 minutes a day, if you can commit that to every day, that's going to be more beneficial. Then if you're, you work out two days on the weekend and then you don't work out the following Friday again, and you have four days off, it's going to be very hard. Your body likes to be regulated. It likes homeostasis. It likes to have balance. Now, none of us are balanced, but it does like when it comes to exercise, your body is really good in routine. The thing is with exercise that you do want to keep challenging yourself because if you don't continue to challenge yourself, no matter what age you are, 50, 60, 70, 80, it's going to be hard to change you. I always share this and I'll, this will finish with this brave Q and a is that there is no maintenance in life. Like the time is not going to stop every day. You get a day older, every month you get a month older. So you're either going to be pursuing good habits and you're, you're going to be working towards more consistency in your health, or your health is going to work against you and be more consistent <laughs> as it takes you down the wrong path. So as you're moving forward in your life, I want to encourage you to exercise. It's really important to exercise. It truly is one of the key components to anybody's health, anybody's life. It's going to make you stronger, healthier, more fit. It's going to ward off the aches and pains. It's going to provide longevity. It's going to increase sex drive. It's going to increase confidence. And I guarantee you, if you're able to work it in your schedule, and get stronger and more tone, and then also get the time dialed in where you can be consistent to work out on a regular basis, you're gonna benefit all the way around. So 
that's all I have. These are the questions. And I hope the answers to your questions worked. Let me know, drop some comments down below. And if you have a question that you'd like me to answer on one of the next Brave Q&As, by all means, hit me up. You can shoot me a message through Facebook or, or Instagram or YouTube, or if you're on my email list. And again, of course, if you're not following me in any of those areas, go find me. You'll see I share all kinds of content. I'm all over the place. But I wanted to get on here and start doing a podcast because I believe in podcasting. I believe in the show and I believe in you. Most importantly, I want you to become braver today than you were yesterday. And I hope this helps. Take care and God bless.